and welcome to True North News. My name is Andrew Zettel and today we're excited to be talking about the Ontario Basic Income Pilot Project. And we're so excited to have a guest here, Jesse Gollum, who has become really the face of the activism surrounding this pilot project. Jesse, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me, Andrew. It's, yeah. it's wonderful to have you and yeah. uh, we're basically uh, picking up uh, from where we had a conversation uh, about two weeks ago where yep. we talked about this. Yep. Um, first off, just tell our viewers, how did you get selected for the Ontario Basic Income Pilot? Um, well, so they they have four cities that they chose for the Basic Income Pilot, um, Hamilton, Brantford, Thunder Bay, and Lindsay, and I reside mm. in Hamilton. So when I heard this was coming out, um, my roommate and I decided we would sign up and see what happens. And um, so we went in December to an information session. Um, we filled out like an application form and had to provide like some tax documents and just mm. some information about what, what our income is. Um, and then there were two groups that were selected, the group that would receive basic basic income payments and another group that would be a control group that would uh, help like fill out surveys about their quality of life so like surveys would come out for both groups and then they would be able to compare and contrast mm. what life is like on or not on basic income so then um yeah I applied for it back in December and I um found out that I was part of the control group that gets basic income in February and on the whole what was your experience like like what kind of things were you using basic income for in your own life oh it was great um, I was able to use it to um, it, develop my business as a freelance photographer as well as expand my capacity man um, my capacity I'm the operations manager at photographers without borders um, so before basic income I was working four jobs just to sort of sustain mm. myself well I've worked to build my business and to expand that capacity um, so then when I got basic income I, I could drop down and focus all of my energy on those two things um, so it bought me the time that I needed in order to make those two things happen and be successful now when you were getting involved with all of this uh, did it ever occur to you that you would become the kind of activist you've become to save the program or to restart the program? Like, when did this kind of come about for you? Well, um, I did not really plan this, no. It's a, the short answer is no. Um, but I had been talking, um, the Huffington Post is actually doing a series on the basic income, and they were doing this before the cancellation happened, where mm -hmm. they were going to do a whole feature on four different families from the different cities who were on the project, and I was one of the people that they asked to um, to be part of their series. Mm. Um, so we were literally, um, we were literally like talking on Facebook like the day of the cancellation, planning the video we were going to film and then an hour okay. later the editor messaged me and she was just like uh so they made an announcement and they're going to wind down the program so everything really? changed everything changed so yeah. at that point uh you what, what was going through your mind when the cancellation happened especially in terms of what you were using the money for uh what did you think at that i point? i was shocked I was devastated and I just felt like the rug was pulled out underneath me. I, I, I was worried it might happen um, with um, the like the progressive conservative co um, government coming in and Doug Ford's government. But then I thought like he had actually gone on the record and he had made an election promise and stated that he wouldn't cancel the pilot. So I'm going to trust that he's going to hold true to his word. But it really only took weeks after he came into power mm. for him to break that promise, um, and so blatantly um, mm -hmm. that it, I was I was shocked. Um, so my first reaction was I was furious. Um, so I immediately messaged that editor of the Huffington Post and said, "I'm going to write an opinion piece. Put that on your website." So that's what I did. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, it kind of started to grow from there. So then from there, I was uh, I got asked to do a radio interview, and then the idea for the portrait series came out. So then I started messaging some local like um, social groups and community groups in Hamilton to be like, well, what's going to happen next? So then um, from there, we decided to go to Queens Park, and that's when I sort of started doing the portrait series. Yeah. Now yeah. you went. You were invited by Tom Cooper. Yes. Is that right? To go yes. to Queens Park. Yes. Um, at that point, you're your feet first into into this this activism work you got to yeah. meet with uh members of provincial parliament yes. you did this uh, uh press conference 
The biggest things that I want to say is that Doug Ford lied. Premier Ford went on the record multiple times during his election campaign, and he broke that election promise. And we need to keep on driving that home that he lied, and we cannot normalize lying. We cannot normalize broken election promises. What's going through your head at that point when you're in Toronto? Um, it was um, it was definitely a new experience. So I was I was very interested to see like what what would question period look like and. I swear, a question period was probably one of the most infuriating experiences I've had in a very, very long time. Um, just to see that, um, like, what a majority government physically looks like in Queen's Park and how many seats they actually take up as opposed to the opposition. Um, and I actually, I did vote NDP. Andrea Horwath is my, represents my person, my own riding, so I voted for her. Mm. Um, so when I was watching her um, bring up very valid questions about the canceled basic income pilot and as well as some other topics, um, to see the, the majority government, um, they would literally bang their hands on the tables mm. um, and their desks like children to derail the conversation. Just to change the subject or to, yeah, yeah, to or not to have the question heard. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, and I was very, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, this is democracy? This is this is what our political system looks like. This these these are children. Mm. I can't believe this. Like so, there was no rational discourse, and my expectations were low going in, but not that low. Um, did, did you while you were there? Did you get a chance to meet with any members of the government, or did you uh, hear any statements from the minister Lisa McLeod responsible for the program? Um, Lisa McLeod did make a statement um, while she, in question period. Um, we did not meet with any member of the Conservative government. At all. None of the members of the PCs met with us or their staff. Um, but Lisa McLeod did say during question period, she said, I care about these people and I want to make myself available to meet with them and my staff will be available, but nobody was available. Mm. So who did you get to meet with while you were there? Um, we we were hosted by the NDP party, so um, we had a lunch and Andrea Horwath came as well as um, numerous other MPPs from her party mm. that we got to meet. Um, we met with uh, Mike Schreiner from the Green Party, and then there were a couple members of the Liberal Caucus that also met with us. Okay. Yeah. Um, so critics of the of the pilot program, some some are less informed than others. Some mm -hmm. talk about people being, uh, you know, lazy dependence on the system of the program really discouraging people from from working. Yes. Um, I imagine you've heard that a little bit. Like, tell us a little bit about the uh, Reddit Ask Me Anything that you did partway through yes. the uh, the pilot project and some of that feedback that you've gotten. Um, yes, yeah, so um, that Ask Me Anything, um, it did receive a tremendous response, I believe. I believe it finished at, like, close to 50,000 upvotes and 10,000 comments. It, the, wow. the numbers were staggering. Mm -hmm. It was... Uh, quite an interesting day and um, but the comments were very polarizing there were some people who were fully in support and saying good for you and this is an amazing program and thank you for speaking but then there were other people um, the, the language that they used was very dehumanizing like calling me a parasite or a leech or saying you're lazy you're stealing taxpayers money um, you should go to jail uh, for stealing taxpayers money um, I got a lot of uh, people telling me to kill myself mm -hmm. that was uh, mm -hmm. a little bit interesting um, so, but yeah, I found that the language, like, if your humanity is worth what you can contribute to society economically and you aren't contributing, then you're a parasite. Mm. Like, that, that sort of dehumanizing language. And, and that was really disturbing for me to find. And even in the midst of this portrait series, I'm still encountering that sort of rhetoric and that dehumanizing language again. And, and, and not just towards me, but also towards the subjects in my portraits. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to curb that away from them because the courage that they have to stand out there with a sign and have their picture taken and have that picture posted all over the internet. Um, I don't want them to have to receive that kind of vitriol. Mm. Um, yeah. now, now, other critics of the program who, who perhaps uh, are not entirely opposed to the idea of basic income mm -hmm. per se mm -hmm. um, include like the conservative finance critic in, at the federal level, Pierre Polyevre, um, we had an article that we, we were looking into where he uh, quotes Milton Friedman and says that basically Friedman was in favor of basic income, but by eliminating other programs, so eliminating housing programs, drug yes. plans, child care, and the, the, the ever-expanding bureaucracy. What do, you, what do you say to critics who sort of take that nuanced approach when they're talking about uh, basic income? 
Um, I think that that's a very fair criticism, and I think that that's a really good approach because, um, like, one of the questions I have about basic income is like. Um, the cost of poverty on a nation, so like the anticipated costs in in healthcare or um, maintaining the justice system, um, like these are two very large costs that are kind of attributed mm -hmm. to poverty. Mm -hmm. um, so then, what would a basic income mean if you know if a person doesn't have long term healthcare problems because they're able to afford good and healthy food? Um, or they aren't they aren't having to deal with the stress of addictions or they aren't um, they aren't committing crimes so that like like what are those long-term cost benefits mm. and that was one of my interests in seeing the study through to the end um, so I'm still like I, I my, my stance and the stance I'm going to say publicly is that I, I believe that um, like for the sake of the conversation and for the sake of the discussion we should have seen the pilot through all the way to the end so even if people are opposed um, or support it then they can say mm. I'm opposed to basic income because this data from this project has said so and um, the Ontario project did have the largest control group in the world and was the most comprehensive for project. For 4,000 participants? Yes. Yep. Yes. There are num a number of other projects taking place or have taken place all over the world but not this large and not this comprehen mm. comprehensive. So for the sake of the conversation, um, to add mm -hmm. that to the dialogue, because right now a lot of this is speculation and wondering right. like what could it have been. So I, I would have liked to think that this would have given us a more definitive answer. Now recently the government uh, in Ontario announced the actual date that the, that the project will end. Yes. It's March 31st, yes. uh, 2019. Uh, earlier rumor speculation have been that it would have ended much sooner than that. Yes. Um, what was your reaction and what were you thinking about when you heard that? Well, um, my, I, I was still like quite upset because um, we waited an entire month um, before hearing something. And in that month, and I know because I was taking pictures of these people, these people were terrified. Um, I had one um, older gentleman after I took his portrait he his voice actually started shaking and he said Jesse like I have mm. a question and I'm terrified of the answer like am I going to get August payment and mm. I had to look at him and say I hope I hope we do but I don't know because we don't have like there was no communication mm. whatsoever mm -hmm. so when the conservative government is saying that they're going to do this in a compassionate way there's nothing compassionate about leaving people terrified for for an entire month wondering am I gonna get this payment what is what is the next you know two months gonna look like what's the next six months going to look like and everything was just based on rumor and speculation and and it's not fair to leave 4,000 people in the dark wondering about if they're going to make like the money that they had signed up for and were promised in good faith if they are going to get that money or not are you encouraged though like do you think it is more reasonable that they have allowed these months into you know to the end of March uh, that these people will still get this basic income. It, it's, is, is it not fair to say that they have uh, responded to some of the criticism and have, have backed off a little bit? Well, um, I do believe, and I actually have heard from um, a number of sources that the Portrait po um, Project actually did put pressure on the government to, to um, announce a more lengthy runway and, and a, a better wind down, or at least communicate to us. Um, so I'm very glad for that. Um, but I do believe like at that point in time, um, March 2019, the project would have been two thirds of the way done. So hmm. why not spend the money and see it through to completion and actually do the research? Because even from a fiscally conservative standpoint, that's just an entire waste of money. Um, it's just wasting a ton of money instead of actually having the research and having the data to show whether or not this is a good idea. But the government might argue that they were uh, elected on a mandate to to spend less to get our province's deficit and debt in order. And that's that's fair and I realize that that's what a lot of why people elected the conservative government in the first place but it, it like at that point in time the government would have spent a hundred million dollars on this project and to, to have nothing to show for it at the end. Hmm. When they could have spent that extra $50 million mm -hmm. and have a, like comprehensive research and have um, a conversation that would have been influential on the world stage too because economists all over the world were watching this project and wanting to see the results. Hmm. The portrait series is called Humans of Basic Income. Yes. Uh, it's on Facebook. Yep. Um, 
what's been the the reaction so far online to to this portrait series? Um, overall, the reaction has been very positive, both on Facebook and Twitter. I have noticed that there have been a few um, comments or debates, um, and most of them center around the idea of, oh, well, get a job. You're lazy. Just get a job mm -hmm. instead of taking my government money. But um, seventy percent of the people on the pilot project had jobs, um, myself included. Um, and mm -hmm. so, so um, a lot of those reactions, I don't feel like had much of a factual basis. But overall, like the response has been positive. Mm. Um, the story has been picked up by the Toronto Star, um, the Hamilton Spectator, CBC. Um, I have two radio interviews with CBC tomorrow morning, um, and then um, I'll be traveling to Thunder Bay and uh, also traveling traveling to Lindsay. And all of that has happened through mm. the social media. Amazing. Yeah. So, what is your uh ultimate goal in all of this like at the end of the day what do you hope the humans of basic income project uh, achieves um i think that my goal has kind of become multi-fold because there's a number of things happening right now um a lawyer in lindsay has filed a class action lawsuit so because of the portrait series i've become a point of contact so i can help direct people to become plaintiffs in this lawsuit should it go through. Um, I also, um, there, there is the idea of like, well, what if the federal government were to pick up the pilot and see it through to the end? Could we, could we um, potentially influence people at, that, at the federal level? And what would that look like? Um, so there's a number, like, like the ideal goal in a perfect world would be that the pilot doesn't get canceled or they reinstate basic income and see it through to the end. I'm, I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not. Um, but I, at the main, like the biggest goal and the th one that I feel like will be the most effective is um, the awareness and education um, and bringing forward a conversation, not just about basic income, but just about what um, social welfare looks like in Ontario and what poverty looks like in Ontario. Well, it certainly seems that uh, perhaps the common ground uh, between different camps can be that there needs to be a redesign and a rethink. Mm -hmm. um, the government has also pledged a 100-day review yes. of all of the social services, the welfare program. Um, are you at least encouraged by that commitment? I, I don't believe that 100 days is enough time to do a full and comprehensive um, review of all the social services in Ontario and how effective they are or not. So when they say 100 days, I'm incredibly skeptical because that, that just doesn't seem like enough time for me, um, especially when I know that even um, to, to do this pilot project in the first place, um, over a year's worth of research was conducted um, and studies and consultations had happened. And my faith is also a little bit jaded, admittedly, because of the broken co um, promise by the Conservative government and the fact that we've received no communication up to this point. So if they're saying that they're going to communicate with people and do consultations, like, I'm here, I'm ready, and I would love to talk to Lisa McLeod or any of these people who are doing these consultations, but I'm not hearing any any voices from them willing to talk to us. Mm. Um, finally, uh, I'm just curious again, we're, we're, we're interested here at yeah. True North News with the, the youth activism, with yourself getting involved in the politics. Um, Thank you. Did you get a chance to meet specifically with uh, Andrea Horvath, communicate that, that she was your representative and did you did you make that kind of a connection um i didn't manage to make a personal connection with andrea horvath yet um just because during the lunch period um time that we were all together with her she took a number of questions and there were other constituents that mm. that wanted to talk to her first um but i do remain pretty faithful and optimistic that her and i are going to have a conversation at some mm. point in time somewhere down this road it's going to happen so well, uh, Jesse, again, it's a, it's a very interesting story. We, we appreciate you coming in and sharing Thank your you. story with us. Thank you. Um, and we look forward to following, uh, following the story further. And, uh, Absolutely. Well, yeah. thank you for having me on. It was wonderful. Yeah. Did you like our video? Did you uh, have any questions or comments, concerns about uh, Ontario Basic Income? Feel free to comment below. Feel free to follow the Humans of Basic Income Facebook and Twitter pages. From all of us here at True North News, Stay informed, friends. Yeah. Stay classy. <laughs> Stay classy. Keep your stick like, on the That's a very Ron Burgundy moment yeah. there. I liked it. What I love and what I want to encourage the viewers is, you know, like you can get in touch with your, you know, with your members of parliament, mm -hmm. with other members. Of they the are parliament. approachable. Or with us. Yes. yes. Get in and we will get your message out there. Yes. 